Okay, now continuing on with uh, problem number five. The costs charged by two taxi services are represented by the two parallel lines on the following graph. Speedy taxi service charges 180 plus 10 centimeters per kilometer. And that would be this, this line. Starts at 180, and then it goes up 10 centimeters per kilometer. You can see that each one of these blocks is uh, 2 kilometers, so it has to jump 20 cents per kilometer. So you can see if you if you drew the slope of this, you would see that um, you would have. Um, the rise would be 20 cents and then the run would be 2 kilometers okay so it would end up being you know 10 cents a kilometer okay um, write an equation for the cost C in dollars of using the economic taxi service for any number of kilometers Okay, um, so for the economic taxi service, um, it starts at 140 and it goes up also 10 cents per kilometer. As you can see, it's the same gradient as the speedy taxi service. So we would write that just like we did in our exploration. We would have the cost equals the starting, the starting price or the initial fee, which is 140, plus the number of kilometers times the price per kilometer which is 10 cents we'll put the 0 0.10 because that's 0 0.1 is 0 0.1 dollars okay um, now you remember when we write the gradient intercept form we write mx plus c so that would be reversing these two so the 140 we would actually put last and the 0 0.10 you would put instead of the M, and then you would put X plus. So that's how you would write it in MX plus C form. So that's the equation. You could either write it this way, you could write it this way. Okay, now Bruce uses the economic taxi service. How much will he pay for traveling 7 kilometers? Um, well, we could kind of see that from the graph, right? So like 7 kilometers would be here. And you can see that that would be equivalent to two dot ten dollars, right? Two dot ten. Now um, you could also do that with the equation. If you put uh, seven in for x, then that would give you seventy cents plus one forty. And what do you know? That also gives you two ten. So you could do it graphically, or you could do it with the equation. Now the last part is how far can you travel for 240? Uh, now 240 is the cost, right? So you could do this with algebra. You could say 240 equals 140 plus k times 0.10, okay? Or you could do it graphically. If you look at 240 here, we're talking about the economic taxi service. So that would cross the economic taxi service here. So how many kilometers is that? Well, this was eight, so you're, we're jumping by two, so that would be 10, right? So the answer would be 10 kilometers. And um, you could do it by algebra two using uh, this. So 2.40 equals 1.40 equals um, <clears throat> k times 10, point 0.10. So we could subtract 1.40 from both sides. I'm doing algebra here. That would be 0. This would be 1.00 plus 0.10k. So now we just have 100, or we have, I'm sorry. <clears throat> we would have 1 equals, like $1 equals 0.1k. And we divide both sides by 0.1, and that would give us 1 divided by 0.1. If we, 
You can do that with your calculator if you if you want. So it'll be one divided by point one. It's ten. So the left side is ten. The right side point one divided by point one is is one. So k equals ten. What do you know? It's the same answer as we got solving graphically. Okay. Okay, now here's the last problem. Six vertices of quadratile A, B, C, D are in the diagram shown in the diagram, and the points are given here. Okay, so they not only give you the points, but they also graph the points. So um, we won't we won't uh, go into that. But so the gradient of line AB is negative five over sixteen. So they're talking about this line here. So they've already calculated the gradient for that too. And remember, the way they would do that is they would take they would take this coordinate and this coordinate, and they would just do rise over run for those two coordinates. Okay? Or they would just look on the graph and they would count these they would count these um, units on the rise over run. They could do it that way too. You can see it's sloping down, so that would be a negative gradient. So we shouldn't be surprised that it's negative. Okay. Now let's calculate the gradient of line DC. Now there's a couple ways to do that. Um, remember, we could just we could take these this triangle here. We could calculate using that triangle. Let's do it that way first. Okay. So we can see that uh, the rise. Now we're going you know this way. So the the rise is negative two, right? Because it's going down. The run is positive one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11. So the run is negative 2 and it's divided by, or the, the rise is negative 2 and the run is 11. So this would be the gradient. We could also do that using um, the coordinates, you know, 7, comma, negative 1 and negative 4, comma, 1. And so we take the difference of 1 and negative 1 divided by the difference between. 7 and negative 4, right? And remember, there's also the calculator method, and I'll show you that here. We could put those two points into the calculator using stat edit. So we would put the x's in the L1 column. So I'd put 7 and negative 4. And in the, in the, in the other column, the y column, I would put negative 1 and 1. And then I would use stat calc. Oops, sorry about that. That was wrong. I do stat calc. And then when I go to calc, I'm going to go to lin reg. So I could do that by pressing 4, or I could use the arrow keys, but I'm going to press 4 because it's faster. L1 is where we have our x's, so we'll leave that. L2 is where we have our y's, so we'll leave that. Frequency lift should be blank because we don't have multiple points. We only have one of each. Then I'm going to go into calculate and hit enter, it's going to give me the formula right here. Um, it's going to give it to me in um, decimal, but um, you could write the, the gradient. See, the A is the gradient, right? So negative 0.181818 happens to be um, a negative 2 over 11. Okay, and then um, now we already have the y-intercept of the line, too which, you know, looking at the graph, you can't really tell exactly where that is. You would have to use the calculator or algebra to figure that out. Okay. State whether or not DC is parallel to AB and give an answer for, give a reason for your answer. Well, the, the gradient for AB is negative 5 divided by 16, and the gradient for DC is negative 2 over 11. So those aren't the same number, and to be parallel, the gradients have to be the same. So, yeah, gradients not the same, okay? Uh, now, part C, find the equation of the line through BD and express your answer in the form AX plus BY equals C. Now, that's kind of a different than what we've seen up until now. We've seen AX plus BY plus C equals zero. Now they want you to put the C on the right, okay? But that's it's just algebra. And what we always start with, look, we already figured out with the calculator, right? So we're going to have um, y equals uh, negative 0.18, right? 
repeating x plus 0.27 repeating that's pretty messy okay and and look at this they want a b and c to be integers which makes it a little more complicated so we're gonna put um, uh, now how can we figure out what 0.18 and 0.27 are in fractions? The easiest way to do that is we uh, put the calculator in fraction mode. So we put answers into fraction. Okay, and then we go to um, the regular screen and we're going to type um, point one eight 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 and it gives us that that is two over eleven okay so the calculator converts it for us two over eleven so negative two over eleven x plus and what about point two seven how what's that so two seven 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 three over eleven. Okay, so now we have y equals negative two over eleven x plus three over eleven. And now, if you look at the form they want, they want the x term and they want the y term on the left, and the other term they want on the right. Well, the constant term is already on the right so the only thing we need to do is need to do is move the x term to the other side so we'll do plus 211x to both sides and then we'll get 211x plus y equals and these two cancel out right and we'll get 311 over here now the only problem is a b and c we have a b and c but they're not integers yet. So how could we change this equation so that everything's an integer? Well, we have a happy coincidence. In the denominator, we have 11 on both sides. So we could just multiply 11 times this and 11 times this. And if we multiply both sides by 11, then that's fine because we're still maintaining the equality. Well, these 11s cancel out. And 11 times this 11 on the bottom cancel out. And then we just need to put an 11 in front of the y, right? Because the 11, there's no, there's no canceling out with the y term. So we have 2x because this 11 canceled out with that one. So we're just left with 2x. 11y because the 11 gets multiplied times this y. And that's equal to 3. So now we have the format they want. They wanted something times x plus something times y equals c. So it's in the form they want. Okay, now the last part, the lines A, C, and B, D intersect at point T. Calculate the coordinates of point T. Okay, now uh, that would be, we're just going to sketch it here. A, C, and B, D, A, C, and B, D um, intersect at this point here. So uh, the easiest way to do this is uh, with the calculator. So we're going to put the two formulas in here and we're kind of running out of time on our 15 minute video so if this runs out I have to make another one so I'm going to do this as quick as possible so uh, the first formula would be y equals negative 2 elevenths x plus 3 elevenths Oops. Three. I'm just putting parentheses liberally here. Okay, so that's one of the formulas. And then the other formula uh, would be the line AC. Ooh, and we don't. The equation of the line through A and C is 3x plus 5. Uh, they give it to us here. 3x plus 5y equals 16. Okay. That's right there, right? So we need to change that to slope-intercept form. And I'm just about to run out of time. 